Okay, uh, this is a video about parametric equations and how we can differentiate them. And before we can differentiate parametric equations, we have to kind of understand what parametric equations are. So I've got Desmos here and I'm playing around with it and I want to show you uh, this little curve here. It looks like an interesting, it's almost like a little uh, lowercase e. We're kind of used to functions going from left to right and being in a little straight line or a parabola, maybe a, a, a cubic function where it's kind of a bit of a roller coaster. What we're not used to is the idea of lines that go anywhere. Maybe a circle might be the most uh, different looking shape that we've drawn on a graph because it kind of goes round in a circle. But this one um, goes in a slightly different shape and particularly I'm going to do this and uh, press a few buttons here and I'm going to make things look a wee bit more dynamic. I'm going to press another button here like that and all of a sudden we get a really interesting uh, dynamic graph which wobbles all over and spins and makes all these lovely little loops and curves. I think that's pretty cool um, as a function. That's uh, pretty wild. I could stop them try somewhere and try and make like, one of the more interesting patterns somewhere like that that's pretty good maybe i like the ones that kind of knit in this but interesting we've nearly got a circle going on here uh, i can move it just a little bit and we get this kind of woven pattern it's almost like and i suppose the question is just playing around with these things but how on earth can we actually draw them? They don't fit the normal rules of functions, which is that, um, that there's only one y value for every x value. Where's all this uh, repeating stuff going in? It's weaving in and out. And the reason for it is up at the top left-hand side of the screen. And if you have a look up at the top left corner of my screen, you can see the function that I've put in. And there's actually two instructions and in this case I'm not giving an instruction to plot a y coordinate in terms of an x coordinate I'm actually telling the graphic calculator to calculate an x coordinate and a y coordinate independently of each other in a way so it does an instruction as a function of how to work out the x coordinate of a given point and there's also an instruction as to how to calculate the y coordinate so they're kind of independent of each other and they make coordinate points which are actually dependent on a, a third variable and that's the t thing going on here okay and if you notice the reason why it's all moving about is that underneath it I, i've set the computer to choose values of t between negative two and one and because sine and cos of those values um, vary that's why we get all these really interesting points on the screen. So what we have here is a function in where there are two different instructions for the x and y coordinates, and we have a third variable, a letter t, which we call in mathematics a parameter when we introduce another letter to help us work with our x and y values or something else. A parameter is just another name for a variable that helps us to uh, move on and calculate different quantities. So I wanted to show you that first of all so you got an idea of what a parametric function uh, was all about. There are, they're not all, they don't all look like that. Uh, I just wanted to show you because I like it. So if we go back to the notes here, um, oops, then what we can find is that parametric equations are uh, when we describe this in, in, in the form of x is some function, y is another function. And if you have a look uh, just down here, you can see what we would say. In terms of our, our parameter t, we can see x is some function of t and y is another function of t. And that can happen uh, for any kind of variable. t often does represent time in terms of uh, motion, movement, where something's quite erratic in its movement. So t is often, but not always, 
representing team. And what we can do here is we can think about how we might describe these on a graph. We could use a graphic calculator, as I just did there. But we can also do it manually, and there are two ways we can do it. One is we could actually construct a table of values to have a look at what happens to the coordinates as t increases. Or secondly, we can actually, sometimes but not always, combine the two x and y functions to make an overall y equals something in x, typical kind of explicit function. And sometimes that actually works. But as I said, sometimes it doesn't. So here's a, an example here. Uh, it says, uh, example 30, if I describe the position in terms of its coordinates of a particle moving in a curve with these parametric equations. So x equals 2t plus 1, y equals 4t squared. At the moment, we don't recognize that function, although I will tell you that it's a function that you've probably come across already in terms of y equals something function in x. But this time, we've introduced a parameter t. I'm going to show you two ways in which we can describe this. First of all, we can construct a table of values. So if I were to make a table like this, and we'll say on the left-hand side that we want to work out the x value, which is 2t plus 1. And underneath, we're going to work out the y value, which is 4 t squared, then it stands to reason that if I want to work out 0, 1, 2, and 3 for t, then we can say at t equals 0, when t equals 0, we have our x value of 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, and 4t squared will give us 0. It tells us that we have the point 1, 0 when t equals 0. Uh, for t equals 1, uh, then our x coordinate is going to be 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3, and our y coordinate, 4 times 1 squared, is 4. That gives us the point 3, 4. And so on. When, x, uh, when t is 2, We've got 5, and then we've got 16. And when t is 3, that our function becomes x equals 7, and y equals 4 times 9, four times of 36. So we have uh, we're able to generate different coordinate points. I should say that it is possible, and the within reason, um, theoretically, we could consider a negative values of t, but just to show you, if we put negative um, 1 into each of them, we get 0, and we get 4. And if we plot these values on a graph, it should give us a representation of the function. Now, this is just a plain board here. I'm not going to use uh, squared paper. But uh, if we have 0, 1, so this 1, uh, 3, 4 would be 3, 4, uh, 5, 16. If we get big, 7, 36. We end up with a curve that looks like that. So actually, a shape that you may well recognize. It's rather parabolic in shape. In other words, if I were to reflect it, having have a look at t equals negative 1, it says 0, 4, uh, which is kind of parallel to this other one here. It's therefore, we would end up with a, 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 a symmetry going on. We've got a parabola. It's a quadratic function. And we can double check that by the other method that I suggested. We could actually just try and combine the two. So sometimes this does work, uh, but it doesn't work all the time. If we have x equals 2 t plus 1, we could think about rearranging that. Subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. 
we can say that t is equal to a half times x minus 1. And if we put that into the other function, which is at 4t squared y is equal to 4t squared, if we substitute that in, we end up with basically, I'll put in x minus 1 over 2 squared. That becomes x minus 1 squared over 2 squared. We can separate the numerator and the denominator. 2 squared on the denominator is 4, and they cancel out. And we're left with x minus 1 squared. And if you know your parabolas, that's the equation uh, of a parabola, which if it were y equals x squared, it would give me on the graph a parabola which has a centre, the origin. But because it's x minus 1 squared, it means that the graph has been moved by one unit to the right, which is basically the same function. Okay, so that's a way of playing around with uh, parametric equations. We can, if we're given them, we can plot them uh, on a graph to get an idea of what they look like. We can sometimes combine the two equations to get an overall explicit function, y equals something in x, but we tend not to work with that at the moment. We're not going to be doing that in this course, but I wanted you to have an idea of what a parametric function is actually is. We're going to have a look in the next two examples on how to actually differentiate um, functions like this and also find the second uh, derivative. So these are going to be things that we're going to go on and look on. So check them out as well. I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, let's go on and learn about the differentiation of these 